Kia ora. Today's topic is a bit complicated and I really recommend that before you proceed you have a look at previous videos about thermal conductivity and thermal resistance, surface resistance and U-value calculations for building elements with homogeneous layers. Okay, let's have a look at a timber frame wall here where the stud is interrupting the insulation layer making it an inhomogeneous layer. Now for the plasterboard on the inside we can go on as normal using the layer thickness in meters and putting it over the thermal conductivity of the material and calculate the thermal resistance of the layer from this. And if we do this for the insulation layer, taking the layer thickness, putting it over the thermal conductivity of the insulation material, it looks like we are forgetting something here. There is the thermostat in the insulation layer to account for, so how do we do that? Let's have a closer look at the stud. The uh, distorted isotherms are indicating that there's a thermal bridge and also that the effects of the thermal bridge are not confined to the stud area itself. Purely area weighting the materials in the layer would not account for the thermal bridging effect accurately. So how do we do this? Let's assume the timber wall we're interested in has a timber stud at 60 centimeter centers. Here's our plasterboard and its thermal conductivity, then the insulation and the thermal conductivity, and in the same layer the softwood stud and its thermal conductivity. And let's assume we have a plywood rigid air barrier on the outside, uh, 8 millimeters thermal conductivity, 0.170 watt per meter kelvin. Now we start with area weighting and taking the percentage of the ranges and putting this over the resistance of that range. By doing this we get the inverse of the upper margin of our thermal resistance range. Inversing this again gives us our upper margin of the thermal resistance range. In our case 2.272 square meter times kelvin over watt. The next step is to establish the lower margin of this the resistance range. To do this we take the resistance of the layers but we homogenize the inhomogeneous layer first by putting the percentage of the uh, areas of the resistance and then use the inverse. So we start with our interior surface resistance, which is 0.13 in our case, and remember surface resistance is the added resistance of thin layer of still air. Then we take the resistance of the plasterboard layer that we've previously calculated. Then we take the inverse of our area weighted and thus homogenized cavity layer. We still need to calculate the resistance of the exterior plywood layer in the usual way by putting the layer thickness over thermal conductivity, which gives us a resistance for this layer of 0.047 square meter times Kelvin over watt, and we need to transfer this to our summation here. At exterior surface resistance, which is lower due to it being windy on the outside, well, unless we put a cladding in front of the ply, but we don't go there now. And we can sum up the resistance of the layer and surfaces here to get to our lower margin of the resistance range, which is 2.229 square meter times Kelvin over watt in our case. The total thermal resistance is assumed to be right in the middle between the upper and lower boundaries. So we take the upper and lower boundary values add them up and divide by 2. In our case that's 2.272 plus 2.229 square meter times Kelvin and we divide this by 2 watts which gives us 2.251 square meter times Kelvin over watt. The U-value is still the inverse of the total resistance, and in our case the inverse of 2.251 square meter times Kelvin, and the watt then goes on top of the bar. This gives us 0.444 watt 
per square meter and Kelvin, which is our result. And this is how to do U-value calculations for building elements within homogeneous layers in accordance with ISO 6946. There's a bit more to U-value calculations like how to go about tapered layers, how to account for air layers within a building construction, but the last few videos should have given you a good start for further exploring U-value calculations in your own time. Thanks for watching.